Norway is definitely bushcraft heaven. It's the most relaxing place I've ever been. And the most relaxing way to see it is by canoe. It's got everything you need. It's got waterways for canoeing. It's got massive areas for hiking. Proper wilderness was something we definitely lack in the UK. And now in Norway, you can use anywhere to camp for one night. So you have the right to travel throughout the land and camp in one place for one night. Um, and it's in the constitution. So I think it's a fantastic idea. Why don't we have that? Now it's my way of thinking the canoe is the number one way of getting around in this part of the world. Now the canoe I'm using is a Canadian canoe, open canoe, uh, unlike the kayak which I normally use. But an open canoe like this is so perfect for this environment because you can carry all the equipment you'd need for potentially months. And also there's a huge potential for catching fish and also foraging. In this area there's so many mushrooms, berries, everything you could possibly imagine. Definitely enough to stay alive without even having to resort to using rations. The plan now is to find a campsite, get a fire going and have a cup of tea. As uh, anyone who's watched this series knows that I can't go very long without a cup of tea. So, now, so I've paddled about 20k downstream and it's starting to get a bit dark now. The sun's setting so it's time to start putting up a camp. So I've just pulled the canoe up onto the bank. It's always a good idea to tie it off as well just in case the uh, water level should rise during the night. It doesn't really rise much here but uh, it's good practice anyway so tether it to a tree or a root or something solid and you shouldn't have any problems. Okay so we're all set. I've made a platform of wood here. Nice dry pieces of wood which will raise the start of the fire off the ground, allow some airflow in between and more importantly keep it away from the damp ground underneath which will impede the progress of the fire. So I've collected some kindling, which we have here, and I've also collected some birch bark. So nicely dry off a long dead birch tree. Now what happens with a birch tree is it'll fall um, either through age or get blown down, and the inner wood will rot very quickly, leaving this stuff on the outside. So that's perfect fire lighting material. It's no danger to the tree at all to get nice big pieces like this because the tree is already dead and this stuff is great, it's bone dry, it'll burn very very well. So the next thing we need to do is take some of this birch bark and very carefully scrape, scrape these nice fine shavings. Nothing in this world is as good for lighting fires as birch bark. It's brilliant stuff. So just put small pieces on to begin with. And then once you've got it going well, add a few larger pieces. I've got my fire lit. I've got my shelter up. Next job, a cup of tea. And pretty basic fire support this time. Just a bit of willow, weight one end. Nice straight shaft of willow. Now the forked stick I've put in the ground and it is adjustable believe it or not because all we need to do to adjust it is put a smaller stick in there and it will go down lower or a bigger stick to raise it up. That's the view I've just woken up to. Perfect. Sun shining, not a breath of wind, perfect canoeing weather. So just gonna get up, have a cup of tea, and get out on the canoe. So as you can see, I didn't have to travel too far from camp to find some berries. These are lingam berries, and they're less than two minutes walk away from where I was camping last night. And they're beautiful, very sharp, but really tasty. So that's breakfast in the bag. Now here we have a nice patch of blueberries, which are similar, but slightly larger than the blayberries or wimberries that we get in the UK. They taste very similar. Coming to the end of their season now, the leaves have turned a bit brown, but the berries are still very juicy and well worth looking for. Now, Norway and Sweden are full of berries, all different types. Just in this area here, I have lingon berries and blueberries. 
and they're one of the healthiest things you can eat and they're absolutely free. So I'm not going to waste any more time talking to you. I'm going to start picking some for breakfast. I'll see you later. So all in all, Norway is definitely bushcraft heaven. It's the most relaxing place I've ever been and the most relaxing way to see it is by canoe. Best thing about it is the Norwegians all take their holidays in August and July. So by September there's no one out here. So I have the whole river to myself, which is about as perfect as it could possibly be. And this is one of the routes we're going to be taking next year for the expedition. So if any of our viewers would like to come along and ruin the solitude of this place, then please do. <laughs> So if you're interested in the canoe expedition in September 2010, take a look at the website and get back to us. And uh, you definitely won't regret it. I'll be waiting, cut myself a slice of time when the wind blows, when the